Welcome to the Tallahassee Community College Chemistry Laboratories. The experiments that you will be conducting in the next few weeks are designed to engage you in thinking about and doing chemistry. This video will discuss a few basic safety rules that will make working in the laboratory a safe experience for you and your classmates. Let's start with fire drills and the location of emergency equipment. If the fire alarm sounds, please exit the room through the exterior door and go to the right and down the stairs. The alternative exit is through the prep room, which provides an escape route through the adjoining laboratory. The instrument room also provides a similar route, but is often locked. In addition, in SM205, there is a third interior door that leads to the lab supervisor's office, which can also be used as an alternate escape route. What about fire safety equipment in the laboratory? The fire extinguisher is located next to the exit door. There are fire blankets, first aid boxes and spill kits on the wall. Close by, behind the panel, you can find the universal cutoff valve for both the gas and water supply to the room. There's an electrical cutoff switch located on the wall and another one on the opposite wall between the interior doors. The emergency telephone is also located near the door. This telephone, just like all the classroom telephones at TCC, has a button that connects you directly to the TCC police and gives them your location at the same time. Take a minute to look at the telephone and the evacuation route posted next to it as you leave the room today. Now let's look at some of the other safety equipment located in the laboratory. The emergency shower and eye wash station are located near the door as you enter. These are used for chemical spills, not fires. If you should have anything spill onto you or splash into your eyes, flush with lots and lots of water, typically for 10 to 15 minutes. Use the sinks for a spill on your hand or foot, but if the spill is more extensive, use the shower. Pulling the handle will release liters and liters of water, which won't be very effective if your clothes are holding the materials next to your skin, so you should remove any clothing that is in the way. If modesty prevents you from removing your clothes, we have a safety shower with a curtain located in the west end of the prep room, closest to room 201. Remember, seconds count. Don't let modesty interfere with your safety. We have a change of clothes should you need them. Another set of safety equipment is also located at that end of the prep room. Work habits in the laboratory. While in the laboratory, you may not eat, drink, or chew gum. This is to make sure that you do not ingest anything that might be dangerous or harmful. So leave the food and drink containers packed away. If it's a very long lab, you can take a break and eat outside. Never taste any reagent. Reagents may be contaminated, highly concentrated, or poisonous. Ingestion may cause dangerous physiological reactions. Only smell a reagent by gingerly sniffing the air above the reagent. Do not inhale deeply. When you come into the lab, put your backpacks, books, purses, and other personal items away on the shelves near the door. Take only necessary materials to your lab station so you will have a clear, organized, and clean place to do your work. Remember to clean up your station and put away any materials you have gotten out in the course of your lab before you leave. If there are waste materials, put them in the appropriate labeled waste jars. Never take lab materials home with you. Wipe the lab table with a wet paper towel and leave the counter the way you would like to find it. 
look under the cover board on the sink to make sure you get everything. This will be part of your daily lab grade. There may be another lab section coming only a few minutes behind you, and those students will want to start with a clean and well-maintained station too. Before you leave lab, wash your hands with soap and water, so nothing in the lab goes home with you. Preparing for lab. Like most college classes, laboratories don't start when you walk through the door. They start well before then. The most effective way to learn is to prepare ahead of time. For laboratory courses, this means reading the laboratory procedure several days before the lab, maybe even more than once. Often, there will be a pre-lab due online the night before, or a page to turn in as you arrive at lab. Also, there may be videos to see that show you how to handle new materials or detailed instructions for a piece of equipment. Make sure you start early enough to solve a technical problem or go to your instructor or the learning commons for help before the deadlines. What to wear for lab. On the day of your laboratory, be sure you are wearing the appropriate clothing. Ideally, clothing should protect you in the lab without interfering with your work and be essentially disposable. Your face, body and feet need to be well protected during lab work against chemical spills, flying glass and fire. So the clothing you wear and the equipment you use play an important role in your safety. Shirts need to cover the shoulders and midriff front and back, even with your arms raised. Anything you wear should cover to the top of the knees. Long pants, dresses and lab coats are all acceptable. You want to be well covered in lab, but be sure your clothes aren't too bulky. That can interfere with your work. The same goes for jewellery. Long necklaces can get in the way. Wear some sort of closed toe shoes, such as athletic shoes, not sandals or clogs. Leather soled shoes and heels are often slippery, and sandals offer no protection at all. Throw an old pair of athletic shoes in your trunk, so when you forget it's a lab day and show up in sandals, you won't have to go all the way home to change your shoes. Eye protection is also very important in the laboratory. Goggles must be worn whenever anyone in the laboratory is working. Eyeglasses and lab safety glasses are not acceptable alternatives. OSHA approved chemical splash goggles are impact resistant and splash proof. These goggles are fine. Vents are covered so that they protect your eyes against chemical splashes. So-called welder's goggles are not. They may be fine for stopping flying objects, but they do not protect against chemical splashes. The bookstore and some other stores sell appropriate goggles. Should you get a chemical splash into your eyes, use the eye wash station. But it won't be as effective if you have contacts in your eyes, because they can absorb vapors and will prevent material from being flushed away from your eyes. That's why we request that you don't wear contacts to lab. Or, if you don't have any alternative, please make sure that you remove your contacts for cleaning as soon as you can after lab. Also, if you have long hair, please tie it back. Braid it, clip it, or use a rubber band. Don't rely on just twisting it under your goggle strap. No one likes the smell of burning hair. To recap, wear clothing that will cover your skin completely from neck to knees, but is not overly bulky. Wear closed toed shoes. Remember to bring your goggles and something to confine your hair. You will not be allowed to work in the laboratory if you are not properly dressed. Now that you know how to prepare and dress to come to lab, what do you do when you get there? 
Wait for your instructor to begin the lab. Never work alone. Please don't handle any of the equipment or materials until you know what to do. We only have enough materials prepared for the experiment assigned in each course. Inspect your equipment. If glassware has chips or cracks, don't just get a different piece. Inform the instructor and dispose of it properly. Usually that means putting it in the broken glass box next to the prep room door. Remember that paper goes in the can and glass goes in the box. Some equipment and reagents are placed on the stock table near the sink and balances. When you get your materials from the stock table, be careful transporting them back to your bench, since someone could back away from a lab station without warning. There should be no horseplay in the lab. Report accidents. What should you do if something unusual should happen? Report any accident, no matter how minor, to your instructor. This includes any burn, scratch, cut, or contact with corrosive liquid on your skin or clothing. You won't be penalized. You just want to make sure you're safe. For minor injuries, we have a first aid kit. If you bleed, please stay where you are and alert your instructor. The lab is equipped with a biohazard spill kit that must be used to clean up any body fluids such as blood. We've already discussed what to do with broken glass. Put it in the broken glass box. Substances spilled on the floor, the bench, the stock table, or in the balance and instrument room should be reported to your instructor and cleaned up immediately. Most materials used at TCC can be simply wiped up with a damp paper towel, but always ask the instructor for the appropriate cleanup method. For example, acid spills are best sprinkled with the chemical from the acid spill kit and then swept up. Likewise, caustic spills, or bases, would call for the caustic spill kit. Never leave spilled materials anywhere. Always clean up immediately. Otherwise, the next person to come along may unwittingly come into contact with it. No one except you will know what it is or how to clean it up. In the balance and instrument room, spilled chemicals can corrode the delicate equipment. During the semester, you will be using gas burners and electrical equipment, which are fire hazards. In case of fire, what do you do? If a fire breaks out, evacuate the lab, sound the fire alarm at the top of the stairs, shut off the gas and or the electrical power at the main cutoffs in the lab. Use the emergency phone to alert the TCC police, then 911. If you decide to fight the fire, do so only if the fire is small and confined and if you can fight the fire with your back to a safe escape route. If you have the slightest doubt about whether to fight the fire, don't. Get out and close the door behind you. To use a fire extinguisher, just remember PASS, P-A-S-S. -S. Pull the pin, aim at the base, squeeze the handle, and sweep the base of the fire. Our labs are equipped with extinguishers rated for ABC fires, everything but metals. If you or your clothes catch on fire, stop, drop, roll, and yell for help. A classmate will go for the fire blanket to help smother the fire. During the past few minutes, we have introduced you to many of the safety features of our chemistry labs and have demonstrated some techniques that will allow everyone to have a safe experience. If you have any questions concerning the material in this video, please ask your chemistry instructor. The most important thing to remember 
is to be alert and aware of what you are doing, as well as what is going on in the rest of the lab. Use your common sense, which is, after all, the most important skill you bring with you to lab. Just learn to use your head and lab will be enjoyable for you and everyone else.